Okay, so the hydrodynamic, uh, uh, you know, uh, all of you know this expression already. Okay, so this is um, the famous Stokes law, right? Okay, the hydrodynamic force acting on a, you know, a particle, uh, it is 6 pi uh, eta m is the viscosity of the medium in which the particle is dispersed, A is the, okay, it is the size of the particle, okay, and B is the, the velocity with which the particles are moving, okay. Okay, uh, people also call it as a, a friction force, right? Um, and A is the radius of the particle, okay. And uh, typical numbers, if you do experiments, it turns out that you know the if you measure the velocity with which the particle is moving, um, if you have uh, uh, if you have a one micrometer radius particle, okay, and typically you know the the velocity of the particle would be of the order of again 1 micrometer per second and if you if they are in water okay uh, it turns out that uh, this fh the hydrodynamic force is of the order of 2 newton power minus 15 newtons okay which is um, 2 femtonewtons right that's a, a number okay the second force um, is the uh, Brownian force. Uh, it is, so, uh, so basically this k b t right, uh, that is the thermal energy I mentioned right, thermal energy as units of, uh, units of joules right, okay, joules that is Newton meter. If I want to convert them to force, I should have some length scale. I am going to use the size of the particle itself as a length scale. Therefore, the Brownian force is given by k b t divided by A okay and again if you take one micrometer particle it turns out that you know, this brownian force is of the order of 4 femton newton okay yeah. so for that all you have to do is uh, kb is you know 1.1.3 1 10 power minus 28 joules per kelvin right and then multiply that with uh, the temperature and then you can get these numbers and we, as we have already said, uh, this Brownian force arises because of the, the random you know, collisions of the molecules with these particles, right. Uh, the force of gravity um, that is the, the density difference um, multiplied by the volume of the particle multiplied by g, right. And um, again if you put in typical numbers like you know the den density is 1100 for the particles uh, density of you know the fluid is about 1000 if you take 1 micrometer particles it turns out that your fg is of the order of again 4 femton newton uh, what is interesting to note is that you know if you look at this 4 femton newton that is what you got for um, uh, gravitational force is very much comparable to the 4 femton newton that you got for the um, brownian forces okay therefore if you take uh, particles of uh, colloidal length scale okay of one mi micrometer size you know the gravity and and um, brownian force are very much comparable okay therefore now if you make the particle bigger okay then your your gravity will will dominate okay therefore you will see that you know your your f gravity start becoming greater than f brownian if it is too large it's much much larger therefore gravity is going to overweigh Okay. So, the Brownian force would like to keep the particle suspended in the fluid, but the gravity would like to make it sink, right. So, that is, so you, should, you have to think a little bit about these numbers. Uh, the last force I am going to talk about is something called as the osmotic pressure force, uh, which is defined as, uh, 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 which is designated as pi, uh, which is equal to n uh, times k b t, uh, where n is the number density of atoms okay uh, um, so basically this comes from the uh, what is called as a ideal gas law um, kind of a concept where uh, the pressure okay uh, that is exerted so what you do is you take a, a container okay and say that i have 
um, I put a uh, some kind of a, uh, you know plate for example. Okay. Now um, you can ask a question as to what is the uh, the pressure that is generated because of uh, an ideal gas law. Okay, and say that the number density of atoms in the container is n. Okay, so the pressure that this plate would feel, okay, it will go as n times kBT. Okay, now people have translated the same thing to particulate systems. Okay, so there uh, again uh, the reason why this ideal gas law and this particulate system uh, kind of uh, analogy is because again you are working with a, a very dilute dispersion okay very few particles in the fluid okay you can bring in the analogy from the ideal gas or gas like state to colloidal dispersions okay and in such a case you know your pi the osmotic pressure force okay uh, goes as again n where n in this case is the number density of the particles in the system okay which is number of particles divided by the volume of the dispersion okay right so again the units match right because n is number density which is number per volume number per meter cube and your kbt has units of joules that is newton meter okay 1 meter 1 meter you can cancel that becomes n n newton per meter square which is pressure right okay so therefore uh, it's a good idea to know a little bit about all these the the magnitude of all these individual forces that are acting on the system when you look at um, uh, you know dilute dispersions or you know when you when you are looking at particulate systems uh, the second point uh, brings down to what is called as the colloidal interactions okay um, so again this becomes important when you are working with uh, colloids or a dispersion where the the particles are sufficiently close that means if i take you know the dispersion with like say phi is equal to 0 0.0001 okay or something of that order right or even 0 0.01 for example okay the distance with the particle is so large that there is I can practically say that there is no interaction between the particles because okay, therefore whenever you are using like say dynamic light scattering setup for measuring particle sizes okay uh, one of the thing that one people ensure is that the you are working with a very dilute dispersion okay uh, so if you get a size by using a dilute dispersion and if you get size by a, a concentrated dispersion okay or a, or at least a, a reasonably concentrated system you will see that the the size that you get okay r1 and r2 they are very different because in one case the size that you get is because in the second case the size that you get is also could also be because there is a interaction between the colloids as well okay therefore these the interactions become uh, important when you you are working with a sufficient uh, dispersion of sufficient concentration and before I tell you a little bit about the colloidal interactions, I just want to introduce you uh, to the concept of interaction itself. Okay, um, how many of you have heard of um, Leonard Jones potential? Okay, one, no, two. Okay, so two people have heard. Okay. Uh, this is, I mean, uh, Leonard Jones potential is uh, people uh, use it for. Um, mimic, mimicking what is called a, a molecular interactions. Okay, uh, if you look it up, that's a total potential. Okay, and there are two terms here, right? Xi x bar minus twelve minus beta x bar minus six. Um, uh, typically, uh, whenever you talk about uh, interactions in any system, in general, uh, phi total that is the total interaction will typically be a summation of phi attractive plus phi repulsive that is in general of course you should have cases where there could be only attraction only repulsion okay but typically it could be a combination of the two okay now 
so what you are seeing here is a plot of phi that is the total interaction as a function of separation distance okay so all these interaction potentials that people talk about they tell you that if you have an idea about the interaction potential you can say something about whether at any given distance the particles are attracting each other repelling each other or is the combination of both are important okay that's what it will tell you okay now if you look at this plot if you look at this region right your both the repulsive term goes to zero attractive term goes to zero the total also goes to zero right therefore if these molecules in this case uh, any molecule that obeys leonard jones potential uh, what is plotted here is uh, a case of two methane molecules okay what i can for sure say is that if the distance between the two methane molecules is more than 0.8 nanometers they there is no interaction between them right i can say that for sure right now if i bring them closer right at some point you know they're going to start repelling that's given by this curve and of course they're going to start attracting as well that's given by these and the, because you have repulsion and attraction which have opposing tendencies when you're going to add them up you're going to have a, a minima right this minima tells you something about okay what is the the stable okay at at equilibrium if you if i were to have you know a, a container which is filled with methane molecules okay so they're going to have a a separation distance typically of the order of you know maybe 0 0.4 0 0.425 nanometer and the energy corresponding to that equilibrium configuration is something like about a minus 2 into 10 power 21 okay it, minus 21 because you know you have 10 power 21 here so therefore this value is going to be minus 2 to 10 power minus 21 if i divide that by kbt okay that is like say 300 times uh, 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 right if you do that you know you can kind of get an idea as to you know what is the the total interaction energy in terms of uh, kbt okay um, now this is for a molecular system right now you can kind of uh, use a similar concept to look at interaction between uh, colloidal particles as well okay the only difference is that again we'll talk a little bit about this later if i have colloidal particles uh, particle 1 and particle 2 okay now we know that these particles are also made up of atoms and molecules right if these are the atoms that constitute the particles right maybe something like this so what do i mean by interaction between the colloidal particles is that if i look at this attractive term okay this comes from what is called the van der waals interactions okay this is in the case of methane molecules if i want to kind of adapt this concept to van der waals interaction between two particles what i have to do is i should take one atom find out the van der waals interaction of that with another atom present with other particle again the same part same atom go to the next one i do what is called as a, a pairwise addition okay i find out what is the total number of molecules or atoms in one particle i find out what is the total number of atoms of you know molecules in the other particle and then i start doing pairwise addition of the interaction between the individual molecules okay and total pairwise interaction is what is what will be the the total van der waals interaction between the colloidal particles okay so now so in colloidal system the uh, two or more particles in the dispersion can interact via several forces okay one is the van der waals interactions uh, there are also what are called as uh, surface forces uh, depletion forces and hydrodynamic interactions okay um, 
Now, we will have a whole chapter dedicated to Van der Waals forces in, in maybe uh, starting next week. Uh, so, the Van der Waals forces, they arise because of what is called the quantum mechanical effects, okay? Uh, because we know that you know atoms and molecules have uh, electron cloud around them, right? Uh, uh, a fluctuation of atoms, uh, you know, electrons in these clouds uh, gives rise to some you know attractive interactions. Okay, that's what is you know the Van der Waals forces. Um, now, the surface forces. I mean, as the name itself says, right? These interactions become important if you have particles. You know, and surfaces are ubiquitous of the particle, right? I have a when the moment I have a particle, I have a surface of the particle, right? Now, whenever you have two particles whose surface come into close proximity, okay? When I say close proximity, I'll again go back to this diagram, okay? Close proximity is again relative, okay? It depends on what you're trying to deal with. For the case of you know the methane molecules here, close proximity is any distance that is less than 0.8 nanometer okay anything beyond that it is not close proximity right okay so uh, typically what will happen is whenever you have a, a, a colloidal particle you may have the surface of the particle that is charged okay you could have adsorbed ions okay the particles can even have nanoparticles on the surface okay the particles could have surfactant molecules on the surface, have polymers, you know, they are grafted polymers, you know, or adsorbed polymers, right? And now, whenever you have such things on the surface, and if the particles come to close proximity, that is when you are going to have the surface forces or surface interactions, okay? Depletion forces are typically. Uh, come into picture whenever you have a system which has colloidal particles and you add polymer molecules to them. Okay, so, that is they arise from soluble polymers or nanoparticles and typically when you had such things there are some attractive interactions that come about. Okay? Again, we will have a chapter dedicated to uh, you, know, you know depletion forces in, uh, in, a, in a few weeks. Uh, and the last kind of uh, uh, interaction, what is called a hydrodynamic interaction, uh, that come whenever you have a dispersion and they are kind of disturb, disturbed by some kind of flow field. Okay? Uh, that means, I could have two particles in a fluid you know and if I apply some kind of a shear they could come together there could be a attractive interaction that is purely because of the flow that you have induced okay and such kind of uh, you know interactions are what are called as hydrodynamic interactions okay these kind of interactions only are important whenever you have such dispersions under flow okay under stagnant conditions they are not important okay under stagnant conditions what are important are the van der Waals forces the surface forces and the depletion forces. Okay? Maybe we will stop here, um, think through a little bit of these things and uh, um, so I think with this we kind of finish the intro part of the colloids course. Okay? We will try and look at some um, you know advanced topics from uh, next week onwards.